good afternoon. Today is Saturday, April 4, 2012. We're here live at Howell Park in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Uh, and we'll be starting these, this District 8B matchup any moment now between your Madison Prep Academy Chargers and the visiting uh, Centerville uh, Bulldogs. Uh, Madison Prep is forced in their traditional blue and Centerville visiting in their gold. Quite a ride. Uh, all the way up from Centerville, so it's uh, always great when we have a visitor from ways out. Madison Prep is 3 and 10 uh, on the year. Uh, definitely improving after a rough start. And as they move in district play, they certainly have an opportunity to make the playoffs. We are about ready to roll and play ball very shortly. Here for your charges. The coach for Madison Prep Academy is Coach Willie Lewis. Also an assistant for the basketball team and the track. He's been very good at the program all year long and batters up. Lead-off hitter for Centerville for the Bulldogs is Terrio, and here's the first pitch. Whoa, swings away as a third roll to the outfield, and Terrio safe for the hit. The pitcher for Madison Prep is Joseph Vikings, and you might know that name as he is on the football team and also has some, uh, some activity in track, so he's uh, definitely very familiar, no stranger to Madison Prep athletics. We're underway, Bulldogs have a base hit. Landry up to bat for the Bulldogs. There's the windup in the pitch. That's high. Ball one. So we have a 1-0 count. Terrio takes a lead. There's the pitch. And swings. It's kind of in the low inside corner, and it's a foul ball that'll leave in the count at one and one. Boykins and his ants already in the stretch which is going to take a little bit off his accuracy. There's another pitch inside. That's a foul ball. Strike two. We have a one-two count. Uh, Landry taking another cut at the inside pitch. All fastballs so far. Not a whole lot of break or bite on any of the pitches. Two and one count. Sorry, one-two count. Terrio. He's going to go. There's the pitch out, and there's going to be no action there. Dixon checks him off, and Terrio holds it first. Terrio tried to take off on that last pitch, on that 1-1 one -one pitch that went foul. So uh, this is clearly his leadoff man. He's clearly their speedster, and he looks like he's in a running stance. There's the pitch. High. Strike three. He's out. There's going to go. There's the pitch, and he is safe at second base. So... Landry strikes out, but the swing might have forced Dixon to take maybe an extra half a second to throw that ball to second base, and Terrio's in safely. So that'll bring up for Centerville. Uh, we have another, we have two Landrys for Centerville. This is the uh, second baseman, uh, P. Landry. I don't have a full name. That's a strike. 0-1 count, first pitch to P. Landry, second base. Last batter was C. Landry, who is the catcher. When you got a catcher hitting in the two spot, that's usually a good thing for the opposing offense. There's the pitch way low and outside, and P. Landry calls for time. So that gives us a 1-1 count. Terrio takes a lead. There's the pitch low and outside. Ball two. Yeah, 
You can hear Boykins instructing the pitcher, or instruct, hear Dixon instructing, instructing the pitcher, Boykins, to kind of stay with him, don't let him get distracted by the base runner. Terrio clearly fast enough. He already stole one base. There's the pitch inside. There's a bounce that's going to hold the runner at second. There's a pitch to first. He's out. Derek Paint, the shortstop. An excellent job of holding the runner at second. Fired a bullet to Johnny Duncan Jr. And Landry is out, and that is two away for Centerville. Probably not the best selection of pitches to swing at. Looks like these Centerville Bulldogs have been a little overly aggressive in swinging. And that'll bring up uh, the shortstop, Burgess, for Centerville. There's the pitch, nice pitch, swung foul, strike one, 0-1 oh, count. Boykins. Pitches, runners going to third. He is meat. He is out. Oh, and that's the end of the inning. So there's no score. Centerville with one hit. No runs on four bats of score. Your Madison Prep Academy Chargers zero and the visiting Centerville Bulldogs zero. Ontario tried to steal second there and uh, Terrell Dixon Jr. was having none of it. And they were meat. That was Gerald Blacher at third base who tagged out Terrio on that attempted steal. And so, Centerville Bulldogs, the visiting Bulldogs, will now take the field. Your Madison Prep Academy Chargers coming up to bat. Pitcher for Centerville. Pitcher for Centerville is Pogue. I cannot make that name out. I hope I got that right. Got a lot of relatives in the Centerville team. We have a C.A. Pogue and a C.O. Pogue. C.O. Pogue is number 13 playing in left field. Uh, the catcher for the Bulldogs is uh, C. Landry. That was the young man who uh, struck out earlier as uh, Terrio advanced to second. So the Chargers should be coming up to bat any moment now. Beautiful, beautiful day out here, about 74 degrees, very gentle breeze, very few clouds in the sky. It is a perfect day for baseball. Woo! That one traveled right up to the backstop, and hopefully we get a few more like that. in and here we go bottom of the first getting underway here in Baton Rouge <laughs> leading off for the Chargers is the pitcher, number nine, Joseph Boykins.
Payne delivers low, ball one, and Madison preps half of this inning is underway. C.A. Polk, and I will try to get you these first names of these young men as the game progresses. There's another one outside all the way over on the chalk, and okay, we have ball two. We have a 2-0 count. There's one right down the pipe, strike one. That one taken looking. Boykins wisely not swinging on the 2-0 count. There's the pitch. Outside, we have a 3-1 count. So Boykins really working Poe pretty well. And he is holding all the cards right now. Hoping he keeps that bat on his shoulders. That one's looked a little high to me, but I'm not the one with the blue shirt. Old Blue calls it strikes. We have a 2-2 count. Pogue waiting for the signal from Landry. There's the delivery and the pitch. Oh, that was inside. That would have been ball three, but that's popped up way high and over behind the bleachers and into the parking lot. We have a full count. How are you doing, man? Pogue delivers. Low and outside. Ball four. That's a walk, and Boykins will take the base. So Madison Prep's first plate appearance results in a runner on. And coming up for the Chargers is Justin Russell. Justin Russell also on the football team. Justin is playing uh, left field for the Chargers. <laughs> on deck for the Chargers is Derek Pate. Shortstop. Pogue delivers. Nice pitch right down the pipe. Strike one. Of an 0-1 count. Boykins looking like uh, looking like he's getting ready to run. At least it wasn't the last one. He was kind of clapping. Probably getting the pitch's head a bit. And the Madison Prep bench certainly very spirited. They have a little cadence going. There's the pitch way high, almost in the, right at the eyes. And we have a 1-1 count. right at his eyes. Pretty hard to miss that one. There's the pitch in, and Boykins is going to go. There's the throw, and he's safe. He's going to hold. And uh, that's no good. Landry got a decent throw out there, but uh, Boykins just had a little bit of speed. It was ever so slightly off the plate, and by the time uh, by the time Pete Landry could come down with it, and I assume they're related, uh, he wasn't in position to get the tag. Whoa, swinging hard right there. You can feel that breeze. And we have a 2-2 count. That one was just a little bit inside. So they're going to be a little more patient at the plate there, especially with the runner on second. Of course, the good news is with the stolen base, the double play is completely out of the question at this point. Outside, and we have a full count. So now the question is, really, is, is Russell going Full count. Question is, can Boykins run again? He's clapping. He's looking like he's ready to go. That pitch is inside, but it's still put in the play. That one looks like it's going to be caught. And that's an out. Good catch there by the shortstop. And that was uh, Terrio. So one down. I'm sorry. No, that was Burgess. Not Terrio. That was, that was Burgess playing shortstop. Just outside, and we have a 1-0 count. Derek Pate up to bat. Uh, spoke with Coach Lewis last night. He said that Pate was one of his better players all around. Um, and actually, other coaches and other sports have told me the same. This is definitely a talented young man at this sport uh, on the diamond. Boykins at second. There's the pitch. That's kind of high. Oh, he calls it a strike, though. Uh, Pate tried to frame that pitch a little bit by crouching down, but Old Blue was having none of it. We have a 1-1 count. Boykins taking the lead. Pogue in the stretch. Fires outside. 2 1 down. One down. No score. Bottom of the first. 
We'll try to bring you a few more here in Louisiana. Oh, there's a ball popped up. Oh, that's going to be all the way behind the backstop. Going into the features and foul ball. No harm, no foul, nobody hurt. Well, we have a 2-2 two -two count. Pogue getting the stretch. Boykins with a huge lead. Ball's high. We have a full count again with two down. And it begs the question again with Boykins' speed. And consider it's a full count, don't try to run. You certainly don't want to make the last out at third base. Pogue fires. That one was high. Pate swings. That one's going way to center field. And it is fair. And uh, Pate's going to have at least two there. Boykins rounding third base. Pace going to hold it second. They're not going to fire home and contest it. And we have Madison Prep on the board first. Joseph Boykins coming all the way around from second base. Rounding home on the RBI double by Derek Pate. And your Madison Prep Chargers lead the Centerville Bulldogs 1-0 bottom of the first. So, beautiful hit there. That pitch was actually kind of high, but Pate had his laser beam vision on it the whole way and smashed it to center field. And now he's taking a huge lead from second base. Pogue is going to step off the rubber, but not going to throw at him. And it'll check him off. So with one down, bottom of the first, we have Madison Prep up one nothing. Coming up to bat is the pitcher, I'm sorry, the catcher, Terrell Dixon Jr. Boy, Pate with another huge lead. Pogue checks him, looks faces, fires. Oh, a bullet hit right back up the middle. And uh, Dixon's gonna be safe at first. Pate will easily be in the third base. He slides, didn't need to. But Madison Prep now has uh, runners at the corners with one down. And I uh, think the momentum has swung their way. Coming up to bat is the third baseman, Gerald Blacher. And uh, Madison Prep really has an opportunity here to put a little space between themselves and their visiting opponents. Time is called by Landry, and he's giving some signals, I am sure, to hold the runner. Looks like the outfielders are moving back just a little bit, so they're probably going to concede that run to pay if it's hit hard enough in the outfield. They don't want anything going over anybody's head, and I don't blame them after that last uh, missile that was fired by Dixon. Looks like they brought a pinch runner on for uh, Terrell Dixon Jr. in Louisiana High. At least when I was playing high school baseball, you bring a pinch runner on and still not lose that position. I'm assuming that's still the case here as they have set a pinch runner. There's a swing, there's a foul, and that's a strike. Don't have a license plate number on that truck for the pinch runner, but I'm sure I can get that from Coach Lewis shortly. It's number six. Pogue, Derek Pate taking a lead from third, oh man, right up the pipe, and uh, Gerald swings, Gerald Blacher swings, and that's going to make it, I believe, a 2-2 count, so wait to get the uh, get the signal from Old Blue, it looks like the pitcher took just a little bit off of that pitch, there's another one, that one's high, and that's going to be a foul, and that one's going to, oh my goodness, someone's going to be very disappointed, nope, just missed a Honda Accord sitting right by the uh, crosswalk, and <laughs> You would have had a very, very, very disappointed driver of a silver Honda if that ball had just been hit a few more feet back. Blades, you're hitting it. We have a uh, two, one-two count. Pinch runner taking actually very short leads. That one's inside, and that's strike two. That's another foul ball. And Poe looked like he was having a little trouble with his control earlier. Not a whole lot, but he's definitely finding it and putting that ball exactly where he wants it. And he has, uh, he's battered swing at everything. That one was kind of high. Should have been let go, but with a one-two count and ducks on the, uh, runners on the corner, you can't afford anything. Oh, that one's high. He swings. He misses. He's out. Pate safe at third, but meanwhile, the pitch runner will take second base. I'm sure that was completely by design. Pate taking a little bit. He's trying to go with the pitcher. That's kind of ill-advised. I don't think this guy uh, got to be the starting pitcher on his team by being foolish. And... Uh, with two away, the umpire's going to call for time. Oh, we have a second official there. Okay, we have a home plate umpire. 
And I know the umpires were a little delayed coming here, so now we have two, and Old Blue doesn't have to make these hard, hard calls by himself. So we're just going to take a short intermission. Two down, bottom of the first, Madison Prep leading one nothing. runners on the corners. And up to, up to bat, Alvin Johnson, designated hitter. There's the pitch. That's way inside. Woo! Gave him a little chin music there. 1-0. Oh. I'll tell you, if he had a beard, you maybe could have argued he almost hit the guy with the pitch. Judson. Looking, there's the pitch. At eye level, that's popped up. And uh, that should be... That one is, is dropped. And they look like they don't know which way is up. And Madison Prep has put two runs across. So... Uh, officially no RBIs, but Derek Pate and the pinch runner do score on an error. The ball was popped way up in the air. Uh, I can't fault these uh, so the Centerville team too much. Frankly, I couldn't see the ball. It landed on the ground, and the third baseman and the shortstop kind of looked uh, at wits about each other, looked a little confused, and they didn't know who was going to get to the ball. So that's a big break for Madison Prep. Two unearned runs, but hey, you take it any way it counts. You take it any way it comes. So Judson, uh, not Judson, I'm sorry, the next batter for Madison Prep, Inside swing, miss, strike one. Next batter for Madison Prep. And actually, I cannot see the young man's. So and one is going. Okay. It's a little dribble over to third, and he's safe. So the runner makes it safe to first. That was uh, Brandon Hilliard. Also on the football team, coming up next about another Madison Prep Charger from the gridiron, Cameron Harrell. Might know him as the uh, linebacker from the team. Well, he's coming out the bat. He plays uh, second base for the Chargers. There's the pitch. Strike one. Right down the chute. So all these runs now are unearned at this point. Runners on first and second. Hillier with a very nice infield hit. He really used his speed to grind that out there. So the next pitch, that's high at eye level. 1-1 one, one count. Madison prep three, Centerville zero. Bottom of the first, two out, 1-1 one, one count. Runners on first and second. There's the pitch down the pipe, swings and misses. Strike two. That was a perfect pitch by Pogue, but uh, he's definitely done a good job. It looked like it was kind of a changeup off speed. If that wasn't an off speed pitch, that was a great pitch up the pipe. There's another one. Looks like he took a little off that one. was going to dribble. That's going to be a foul ball. And so we'll still be at one and two. Pogue definitely has a gift for a little bit of a few off speed pitches. He's thrown a couple of change ups, and you can see that the batters clearly were not prepared for that change in speed. So, 2 1 count. I'm sorry, 1 2 count, I stand corrected. Got that mix. There's a pitch, that's on the outside. Good eye by Cameron Harrell, 2 2 count. Pogue fires high. Full count. And so with that full count, you know these Madison Prep uh, base runners are about to take off any moment now. Judson and uh, Hilliard should be off to the races uh, pretty much as soon as Poe goes into his motion. He's in the stretch. Runner's taking a huge lead. There they go. It's high. Ball four. And that's going to load the bases. So... Base is loaded. Curry Moses up to bat. And uh, Madison Prep can really blow this wide open. There's the pitch right down the shoot swing. Strike one. Curry Moses playing right field for the Chargers. This is his first at bat today. There's the pitch. Strike two. Swinging. A lot of air there. He was a little late on that string. That was a swing. That was a fastball right up the pipe. Pogue 
delivers way outside. That one's wild. Runners coming home. Hold to cover. There's the throw. Safe. The ball's in the infield. So Judson scores. And now coming home is Hill. Uh, oh, he's out. Hilliard is out. He took a shot right to the grill. Uh, Lander wasn't going to let that happen. But nonetheless, the damage is done. The score at the end of the first inning is your Madison Prep Academy Chargers 4. The Centerville Bulldogs 0 on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. Um, no, 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 it was, um, the team that was winning all year, um, uh, the, uh, DOTD, uh, yeah, it was that, that team, 42 and 51, yeah, it was, it was, a uh, championship game was interesting, it was close for a while, and then that fourth quarter blew up, and it almost came to blows, actually, we had to call it with, like, like three minutes left, we had to stop the game, it was getting ugly, it was real, though, <laughs> I know Joe Bear, he's an animal out here, he's got a lot of spirit, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of speed, a lot of speed too. A lot of speed too. Anyway, very decent crowd here for a Saturday afternoon high school baseball game, especially with Centerville being so far away. I'm guessing there are about 50 people here so far. Decent attendance for a Class B matchup in late in the afternoon on a Saturday. I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors who sponsored Madison Prep Academy. Athletics all year long. Uh, Williams Construction, who's been a sponsor from the very beginning for all your residential and commercial needs. Please contact Williams Construction in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Also, Golden Medical Equipment and Supply, where the patient comes first. Sorry, that is wrong. It's where the patient matters. Uh, if you have older relatives, the walkers, wheelchairs, crutches, canes, walking aids, uh, please contact Golden Medical Equipment, where the patient comes first, on Wooddale Boulevard in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And the Daily Hat Trick, the most informative and entertaining sports, ball, sports blog on the World Wide Web. If you like sports, if you like to have fun with sports, please log in to www.thedailyhattrick.com. That's all one word, thedailyhattrick.com. We're ready for the second inning now. We are ready for the second inning now. And coming up to bat for the Bulldogs is the shortstop, uh, Burgess. That was a very, very long first inning. Ran about 25 minutes long. That was like the major leagues, but Madison Prep certainly made it count. Boykins gets the signal from Dixon. He steps. He's in his motion. Very deliberate. Fires inside and swung at. That was a good breaker on the inside. That looked like about a two-seam fastball. That one goes in the parking lot. And if this keeps up, we're going to have some very disappointed motorists, as I've seen a couple of cars in peril already so far. Anyway, Boykins with the two-seam fastball swung on inside, and we have a 0-1 count. So here we go. Boykins delivers low. Ball one. Centerville I'm not really sure what their record is in play but they do seem to have a pretty uh, judging on some of the banners hanging in the gym they have a very proud athletic program so that one's just on the white <clears throat> just on the white so we have oh no that's called a strike old blue called that one a strike so good break for the Chargers and we have a one two count And that's why he does what he does, and I do what I do. That one's low, ball two. We have a 2-2 two -two count. 3-1 count. 3-1. I'm sorry, so that was a ball. I apologize, folks. I was accustomed to looking at the first gentleman who was calling from the front, so that's a 3-1 count. Boykin's trying to loosen up a little bit there. That one's high. At the eye level, and it'll take a base. So... So it only takes five pitches out of Boykins to send the runner Burgess to first base. And coming up to bat now is the pitcher, Pogue. Really struggled in that inning. Actually, not a bad inning. He had one earned run with three costly unearned runs off of errors as they could not get that final out. And Madison Trump really capitalized on it. So... 
Burgess at first. No out, top of the second. Runner's going to go. Burgess, uh, Dixon fires. He's in there safe. Oh, and Bate couldn't stay with it. It kind of dribbles into the outfield. But uh, Brandon Hilliard, the center fielder, is there. That one swung on and kind of dribbles, and that's a strike. That's a foul ball. <laughs> Boykins delivers right up the chute. But one two count. Boykins in the stretch. Bird just not with much of a lead. There's the pitch. That's right up the chute. So Pogue's gonna go down on strikes, looking on strike three. That's a call third strike. I don't think any coach ever wants to really see that, but that's good for the Madison Prick Academy Chargers as they will get the first out and Burgess will not go any further or any farther rather than second base. So coming up to bat now for the Bulldogs is the first baseman Pontiff. Boykins in the stretch, fires, swings. That one was high and inside, but he couldn't lay off it. That's strike one. He kind of let that one get away from him a little bit and Pontiff will Square is back, back up. Sorry, that is not. So Duncan, not Pontiff. I stand corrected. That is the center fielder. Duncan. Pontiff is on deck. Pontiff is on deck. So that's two strikes now. Both hit foul. And uh, Boykins, after giving up a, uh, a walk and a stolen base, if he can get one more strike, Madison Prep is going to be... Uh, Go from being in danger, giving up a run, to uh, holding all cards for hanging a zero. Fires, that one's very low, and that was easy to lay off of for Duncan. And we have a <clears throat> have a one-two count. Boykins, oh, he smoked that one right into the hole. That's going to bring Burgess around the third. He's not, he's going to hold. Pate, that one ricochets off Pate's glove, and he's looking, looking. He's not going to go. The ball kind of fortuitously bounces towards third base. That will hold uh, Burgess, but meanwhile, uh, the batter, Duncan's able to take advantage and round a second, so there's no force play. And uh, instead of having uh, a two-out situation now, uh, Boykins has worked himself into a little bit of a pickle. Runners on second and third, and with only one out, and uh, Pontiff, the first baseman up to bat, they need a strikeout in the worst way. Boykins in the stretch. You know, with the base open, I, it's really not out of the question to walk him over. Oh, there's a swing foul, strike one on the inside pitch. Two seam fastballs been getting these Bulldogs all day. You can see the breaking action just uh, on the inside for Boykins, who is a right-handed pitcher, and yet that pitch uh, continues to break to the inside part of the plate for right-handed batters. Boykins fires, low pitch, it swung on. Good uh, drooping action there, good sinking action on that pitch. And we have an 0-2 count. So Boykins, again, is one pitch away from... Uh, taking the pressure off of the charges and putting it back onto the Bulldogs in this half of the inning. There's the pitch. That's right down the chute. Swings. Strike three. I thought he got a piece of it, but he did. 
And they call him out. I, I thought he got a piece of it too, but that's why old Blue wears the blue, and I just call what I see. So, big break there for the Chargers, and now with two down, with two down, Madison Prep just needs one more out of this inning. They have a base open, so really Boykins can get very uh, very cute with the pitches if he wants to, and he does. He goes high. That's ball one. Uh, up to bat is uh, Pogue, the left fielder. That's uh, C.O. Pogue. C.O. Pogue and a C.A. Pogue. I'm going to guess these guys are related. But this is not the pitcher. This is the left fielder, Pogue. 1-0 count. There's the pitch. That one's outside and low, and Pogue does not bite on that, and we have a 2-0 count. And, you know, with a 2-0 count and with the lead and with runners on second and third with first base open and a 2-0 count and two outs, you have to wonder if uh, if Boykins is going to give him anything in the strike zone. I certainly wouldn't at this point. And he gives him right up the shoot. That one's hit in the air. Oh, boy, that's all right. Looks like Derek Payne is right there to get it. And that's the end of the half inning with the score. Your Madison Prep. Yeah, you can see Coach Lewis. Madison Prep Academy charges four. And Centerville Bulldogs a zero in the middle of the second inning. Coach Lewis, you can you can see him telling uh, Boykins, while I'm sure he's glad he got the out, that he probably should have served up such a fatty uh, right there with a 2-0 count with the runner with the base open. Uh, nonetheless, the charges are out of the inning and they hang another zero and they are still up four nothing. So, setting up here for the bottom of the second inning, Madison Prep broke a little bit of a sweat in that second inning, but uh, between some good fielding and some pitching by Joseph Boykins, really good breaking action on his pitches. They were able to wiggle out of the jam, and Centerville strands two runners with a score, Madison Prep four and Centerville zero, bottom second. Coming up to bat for your Madison Prep Academy Chargers uh, is Curry Moses. Moses was up to bat last time. Uh, before Madison Prep uh, benefited on a pass ball, they started to bring runners home. Uh, Brandon Hilliard got maybe a little too aggressive and got stopped at the plate while uh, Mose was up to bat, so he will resume his at-bat as we get ready for the bottom of the second inning here at Howell Park here in Baton Rouge, Louisiana on Winborn Avenue. Very nice afternoon. Um, if you're watching this live or watching this replay on LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com, I'd like to encourage you to come out and see these young men play. They work really hard, good kids, and they definitely deserve your support. Here we go. Pogue stands, delivers, winds up, fires right down the middle, strike one. So Moses down, oh, one in the count. Pogue delivers. Right up the shoot, fastball, but uh, Pug was a little late on his swing, and he's out at first. Close play over there at first base, but uh, Pogue hustled up and got the ball to pot of just in time, and just like that, Centerville has one down in the bottom of the second inning. That brings us back up to the top of the order. Joseph Boykins, the pitcher up to bat. Boykins reached on his first plate appearance. There's the pitch. High. Ball one. Pogue delivers. Inside. Oh, there's going to call it. Strike one. Looks like he just got the inside uh, segment of the plate. 
One one. Pogue delivers right up the chute. That one's gonna be a little dribbler. Rolls foul, and you can see Boykins uh, kind of caught his hands a little awkwardly. He's not wearing batting gloves either, so I'm sure that did not help. And we have a one and two count. Pogue. From the wind up, that's inside. Oh, wow. That one almost got Boykins. Boykins tried to frame that one. He extended his elbow, but the truth is he probably extended it almost over the plate. Old Blue wasn't fooled, and he is called down on strike. So up to bat now for the Chargers is Justin Russell. That's strike one. Again, Pogue working that inside part of the plate is getting some pretty generous calls from the umpire in there, and I would take advantage of it too. Pogue not wasting any time. Delivers. That one's on the outside. And it's going to be a 1-1 count. So we can kind of see that Old Blue wants him to bring it inside. Does not want to make the batter reach. And uh, personally, that's how I like to see the games called myself. You know, oh, that one's way inside and almost got a piece of his uniform, but you have a 2-1 count. Pogue let that one get away from him. You, know, you have that umpire who's, who's you know, calling the, the inside pitches to right-handed batters. Uh, pretty favorably, and so you can't blame him for going back inside, but you certainly don't want one to get away. There's another pitch. That's a fastball right up the chute, and that's called strike. Oh, it's called the ball. Called a ball. 3-1 count. So it's clear. This, this umpire wants him to go inside. You got to man up. You got to go in. You got to challenge these batters. That's what, that's what Blue's message is, and he does challenge him, and there's the swing. And it's a strike two. And I can feel the cool breeze all the way back here. It was just a nice fastball. Maybe a change up thrown by Pogue. Looks like he took a little bit off of that one. Pogue with a full count. Delivers. Swung put into play. It's going to roll right towards the shortstop. Fires it over to Pontiff and he's out. So that'll retire the side as uh, uh, Burgess uh, gets the perfectly played ball all the way over to Pontiff. No run, no hits, no errors in that bottom part of the second. The score, your Madison Prep Academy Chargers for the Centerville Bulldogs, zero. As we get ready for the top of the third here at LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com, we'd like to thank those of you who have joined us live. One's low. She's getting those warm ups on. On deck for the Bulldogs. Designated hitter, Arias, number two. So Boykin's getting in the last of those warm up pitches. Looks like uh, we're about to play ball. Hey, hey, uh -uh. 
Boykins winds up, delivers, inside. 1-0 count to Arias. Boykins in the windup, steps off the rubber, now delivers. That's way high over Arias' head. Ball two. I don't know, might have seen uh, the whole weak flash before his eyes right there on that pitch. Rios looks like he stands about maybe 5'7 or 5'8, and right now he's got to be thankful he's not a basketball player. That one right over his head. 2 0 count to Arias. Boykins. Fires right down the chute, strike one. 2 1 count to Boykins. There we go, he found the zone there. Boykins delivers. That's way outside, and that's ball three. And you can see he's starting to lose a little bit of that zone there. And uh, you have to wonder how many more pitches he has in him before Coach Lewis uh, gets somebody warming up. He seemed to struggle a little bit with his control there during the warm-ups. Here comes the delivery. That one's inside and inside the inside middle. And uh, Arias went after it. And, and probably wisely so. Um, you know, the umpires definitely been very favorable on the inside pitches to right-handed batters. And while that one looked like it was probably off the plate, I don't think Arias would take any chances and give Boykins a full count. So, anyway, it's a full count regardless. There's the pitch, and that one swung on again. Another foul, and still with a full count. Boykins fires. That's inside. He swings again. Boy, he just could not lay off that one. Boykins really has had Arias going. That's three consecutive times he's thrown a two-seam fastball to Arias, and three consecutive times Arias has chased. Now, granted, it's a full count, and you have to protect the plate, and this umpire has called strikes on the inside. So you definitely have to protect, but at what point, you know, does the ball have to come near your fingertips for you to lay off it? Boykins winds up. Throws. That one's outside, and he's going to take his base. So Arias really, really worked Boykins on that. That was a uh, eight-pit bat. And uh, if Boykins was tiring before, he's, he's really got a problem on his hands now as he's given up eight pitches and has put a runner on with no outs. It almost would have been better if he had plunked him on that second pitch and saved the strength. Not that you want to see any kids get hit. So up to bat now is uh, Jackson. The right fielder. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. This is Terrio. We're back to the top of the order. Back to the top of the order. That's Terrio, the uh, second baseman. That one goes low. We have a 1 1 count. Count is even at 1. Boykins delivers, runner. Started to take off a little bit, now he's going to come back. They're going to hold Arias there at first base. 2-1 count. Boykins in the stretch. Checks the runner over at first. Arias is going nowhere. There's the pitch. That one's inside. That's going to go five. 2-2 two -two count. The dimensions here are very equal, very cookie cutter, very routine. 345 to center field, 315 to left, and 315 to right. There's high. That one swung on high in the zone. Oh, my goodness. That one's going to roll past Cameron Harrell. And he had an opportunity, at least possibly for a double play. But instead of the double play now, Centerville has runners on first and second with no outs. That hurts. 
And, you know, I, I'm sure that the umpire, uh, the infield umpire, probably distracted his view just a little bit. But the umpire is part of the field, just like a stone, just like a shadow. And um, absolutely have to follow the ball all the way into the glove. And, you know, that thing, and that's not easy, too, with a, with a left-handed second baseman moving against his body like that. He probably would not have gotten the double play, but certainly not at first. But you got to get the ball in the mitt first. So Centerville gets a huge break and have an opportunity to uh, cut into this Madison Prep Academy lead. Coming up to bat is the catcher, uh, C. Landry. And with runners on first and second, he has a golden opportunity. At the same time, if Boykins can uh, keep that two-seam fastball going low and inside, maybe he can get a dribbler, maybe they can get a double play. Who knows? Arias takes the lead off a of second. That one is going to be high ball one. Duncan now, Johnny Duncan Jr. coming off of first base to cover a little bit more of the hole. Boykins in the stretch delivers. That one's high. And ball two right at eye level on Landry, who was not fooled. There's the pitch. Up the shoot. Strike one for Joseph Boykins. Two one count. Boykins in the stretch. Delivers low. And it's going to pass uh, Dixon a little bit, but he regains his composure, gets it back to Boykins. No advancement. Landry getting instructions from the coach. 3-1 count with two on. You do not swing unless that one is right down the center, right down Broadway. Boykins has thrown a lot of two-seamers. I don't think he's going to give him any down Broadway. I would imagine he's going to go inside on this one. The umpire has been giving him the inside strike all day long. And uh, he's just called the ball. He's just called the ball. Boykins stepped off the rubber before delivering his pitch. He shuffled his foot. And that's going to cost them a base. And now the double play is out of, out of play. So Centerville is... And I think there's a problem with the ball or it's scuffed or umpire's asking for a fresh ball. And you can see that pearly white going right there. So Centerville has a golden opportunity with uh, two on. And now there's no force. You know, if I'm Boykins, I don't know that he just doesn't go inside hard on this one. Because unless he gets the strikeout, Centerville, if they even put the ball in play, are going to get some runs unless it's a pop. That one's high. That's not a bad walk. That is not a bad walk at all. This is why it loads the bases, keeps the ball from being put into play, and also brings the force play, also brings the force play back into account. So while this looks bad, and while Centerville does have the tying run at the uh, up at bat, up at the plate. P. Landry, this, sorry, Terrell's third base, I apologize, I had him in second. P. Landry, the second baseman, while he has a chance to tie it with one swing of the bat, at the same time, uh, one ground ball and Joseph Boykins can be right back in the driver's seat with only giving up one run. So, uh, this inning far from over, I think that was definitely wise to walk Landry. Uh, to walk uh, walk C. Landry, not P. Landry. And, and, you know, if you're Boykins right now, you're clearly capable of scoring runs. Why not just come after this batter? You know the umpire is going to give you some love on the inside part of the plate. Throw that two-seamer, put it over the plate, make him swing. Maybe something comes low. So uh, Boykins again getting instructions from the umpire. And they're ready to play ball. Dixon gives him the signal. Centerville trying to get a little rally clap going there. There's the pitch. Down Broadway. Strike one. So that one's fouled off.
just a bit outside. So we have a three and one count. You know, at this point, I think you just dare him to hit you. I think you put it right down Broadway, make him swing. Ground ball, you get a couple out. That's one right down. Oh, no, that one's hit hard. That one's going into right center field. That's going to take a bounce. Centerville's going to pick him up here. Uh, Arias comes around and scores. And here comes the leadoff batter, Terrio. He scores. This could be an in uh, And Landry scores. And Centerville has sliced this lead down to one with a three RBI triple. A three RBI triple by the second baseman, P. Landry. And so the bases are largely empty. Runner on third, no out. And Centerville now has a chance to take the lead in this game here in the third. <laughs> so uh, looks like there's a home favorite there. Birds giving the uh, giving the dug uh, I guess his patented pre-bat dance. And uh, why not? I'd be dancing too. As uh, Centerville has a chance to get right back in this game, 4-3 here in the third inning. Boykin stares down in the stretch. Livers that one over the strike zone. Strike one. That's what we need to see a little more of. That one was uh, on the lower outside part of the plate. There's another one right down the chute inside. That's going to dribble over to Pate. Pate checks down the runner and oh, it gets past Johnny. So uh, on the error, on the error, P. Landry's going to score, and we're all tied up. Centerville four, Madison Prep four. That was uh, that's going to officially be uh, an E3. Actually, I'm sorry, strike that in E6. As uh, Pate put that well with outside of uh, Duncan's reach. Really, if he just put it right to Duncan, uh, he would have been out and would have gotten the first out of the inning. But instead, uh, the bases are empty, but uh, the out column is also empty as there are no outs and we're all tied here in the third inning. Boykins delivers it to Bunt. They're going to try to bring the runner to second. Easy out at first. They take the out at first as uh, Pogue, the pitcher, just puts a little tapper on a sack Bunt. So that will not count against his batting average as it's a sack Bunt to move the runner over. To move Burgess over to second base. And coming up to bat now is Duncan. Duncan, the center fielder. Boykins puts that one over the outside part. That's Oh, he calls that a strike. Very generous and apparently in the outside corner. So uh, the umpire being a little more uh, liberal in the strike zone here. Oh, no, he called that a ball. That was not a strike. That's a strike. That one also getting the outside corner. 1-1 one, one count. That one also nipped the outside corner of the plate, so the ump showing a little love on the outside corner here. Boykins fires right down the chute high, caught by Pate, two away. So Madison Prep working to dig themselves out of this hole, a deep hole here, as they've pretty much relinquished uh, their first inning lead. And up to bat is the first baseman, Pontiff. Pontiff popped out on his last at bat. Boykins fires right down Broadway, strike one. Little low sinking action there, but very well above the knee in the zone and over the plate. Two down, Burgess on second. Pontiff up to bat. Boykins fires inside. Ball one. Boykins delivers. That one's high and outside. Easy to lay off that one. 2 1 count. Boykins delivers. That one's inside and it's a foul ball. Strike 2 2 2 count. Two balls. Two strikes, 
Two outs, runner on second base. A lot of twos there. Boykins in the stretch. Checks the runner. Delivers right down the chute. Swings and misses it out. Madison Prep digs himself. Out of the hole, this kind of goes down on strikes. The score in the middle of the third inning, your Madison Prep Academy Chargers four, the Centerville Bulldogs four in the middle of the third, here at LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com. We're going to recharge our batteries and rejoin you in just a few minutes. Please tune back in to LouisianaAllAmericanSports.com in about 15 minutes. <laughs> 